think we have Jay Thakkar with us, senior technical analyst at uh, Sher Khan. Uh, Jay, what is your view as far as pharma names are concerned? Let's start with DV's lab. It's a 20% correction today, 25% rather. Can you just first uh, tell about that? Definitely, you know, uh, Pankaj, the thing, idea is that since it has uh, fallen by so much, you know, 20%, then obviously, you know, uh, the, the weakness is there and, uh, you know, uh, the, the charge structure has weakened and clearly it has broken its crucial support levels. But, you know, if I, if I tell you uh, some medium-term counts or, the, you know, longer-term counts on the DB's lab, then the thing is, uh, Pankaj has also broken along with this as previous support levels. So, I think on the lower side now, this stock has a good support area. But then uh, I would say it's still quite far from these levels and it comes to almost to the levels of 865 in the medium term. If it settles around those levels, I think, you know, one can look to enter into this stock because this stock with this breakdown has entered into its, has, or I would say rather Pankaj, it has confirmed its wave 4 down, which will take a lot of time to consolidate. Generally, wave 4s are consolidating pattern, triangle patterns or the flag patterns or expanded flat. They take a lot of time to complete, generally. So I think uh, there's no hurry. Uh, to buy in this panic. I think around 865 it settles down. One can think of buying, but then I think, you know, uh, it's a wave force, so it will take time to move up. Right. Uh, Sipla? Sipla, uh, see Pankaj, my view on Sipla is negative. I think that the recent bounce which we which had seen on Sipla was a clear uh, rising wedge pattern, following which in today's trading session only, if you see in the morning, it was trading negative and, uh, and suddenly we have seen some spurt coming in this stock. But then on the upside, what I believe is 590 is a very crucial resistance on this stock. And that is uh, a few points above the recent rising wedge pattern which we had seen on this stock. Until it's not moving above those levels and closing above those levels, I think the overall trend will, neg will remain negative in Sipla. So I, my, my sense is that you know one should utilize this bounce as a selling opportunity in Sipla. Uh, with a stop loss around 590, one can target around 536 initially on the lower side and once 536 is broken, I think it can slide to the levels of 510 as well. Right, so right now with this bounce, what would you do? Sell. Right, you would want to sell it in this bounce, why? I mean, it's, it's showing strength, any particular reason? Well, uh, Pankaj, as I said, you know, this stock had formed a, a rising wedge pattern, you know, right from the bounce of around 486 until 586. That 100 points bounce on Sipla was a rising wedge pattern or I would say rather a corrective uh, rally on Sipla. You know, nothing impulsive form, you know, generally we uh, look out for the impulse move, very swift move, not so overlapping moves on the charts to predict the, the future price move on the upside. But that move didn't come in Sipla. Uh, so I, I, you know, I doubt that you know this rise is a corrective one, which we say uh, is just correcting its fall or retracing its fall. Once this retracement is over, we will again see some downside. So my sense is that with a negative weekly close uh, last week, I think 586 is the top, uh, at least the short to medium term top. And we'll, till we do not see any close above those levels, I am taking some few points above 586. So I said uh, one can sell with a stop loss of 590 for a target of 536 to 510. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, but uh, stop losses have to be followed quite significantly or just wait for today's closing and wait till Monday? No, it should be on a closing basis, definitely. Right. Uh, so, right now with the news flow coming in, stock being volatile, you would not do anything? No, one can sell, Bankaj, but then if it closes above 590, one can exit. It's like that. Right. Uh, Bharat Financial, what will be your view? Bharat Financial also my view is negative, Pankaj. You know, overall what we have seen in this stock is the previous fall was clearly a 5 wave declining structure following which uh, we had seen some bounce coming in this stock. But then the overall charge structure clearly indicates that the stock, uh, you know, has reverse uh, is uh, uptrend, you know, uh, and uh, momentum indicators have also gone into a sell mode. So my, my thinking is that Bharat Financial downside is still pending. Uh, since it looks too oversold, Pankaj, so I would not be saying that, you know, one can short at these levels. But then any bounce uh, seen in Bharat Financial should be utilized as a selling opportunity. Now, the recent fall which Pankaj we had seen on this stock right from the levels of around say 755 till the recent lows was a clear 5 wave declining structure. So, if you see a bounce of around say 38% in this stock and even if it comes to around say 620, 626 levels, it would be a very clear uh, sell signal at that, that level because there, there you will get a good risk reward. So, I think around 626, uh, 630 levels one can sell. Then the target on the lower side would be Bunga somewhere around say uh, 520 or maybe even below 500 levels.
Right. Uh, Orbindo Pharma is also now hitting days low. It's around uh, 645. Is that also ca classifying as a sell? Absolutely, Bankaj. You know, Oro, uh, Oro Pharma is looking sell. See, now Oro Pharma, like DV's level, Pankaj, is also in its wave 4 consolidation, right? The, the move which we are seeing in Oro Pharma, right, from 200 levels, surpassing almost 1000 levels, you know, that was a clear impulse move, a three wave rise. And a very swift move, you know, as in uh, uh, the shorts were always, uh, you know, squeezed and we, we saw that, you know, the bulls always came back uh, when we had seen that rise. But then uh, now the recent fall which we have seen has been quite corrective and which clearly indicates that now the downside or correction or consolidation of all of Arma has started. So the previous fall was uh, a wave 2 correction, so we are expecting this to be a wave 4. Now see, generally, uh, I would say wave 4 retrace is almost 38% of his entire rise of the third wave. So if I calculate that percentage levels, then Oro Pharma is likely to inch towards the levels of 568. And if it breaks 568 in going forward, then it can slip below 500 levels as well. And as of now, I'm just uh, you know thinking that it will consolidate within the levels of 568 and on the upside around 840, 850. That's the consolidation zone. Uh, and I think you know it will take few more months to consolidate before it breaks out on the upside again. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, Cadilla now, now Cadilla has just fallen 5%. When we started the show, it was down around a percent or so. Uh, so in the last 40 minutes, it's fallen. It's, it's, it could be because DVs is falling, Oro is making a new low, Sun Pharma is going down. But do you think Cadilla qualifies for a buy? No, see, Cadilla also looks sell to me only because see, the recent bounce which we have seen in Cadilla as well was a very corrective fall as I explained in Sipla. Right. So likewise, Cadilla also had shown a corrective uh, rise only, and then uh, you know, you know, the fall recent, which uh, we recently which we are seeing, has clearly showing some weakness. The stock is trading about uh, again below the short-term moving averages, forming low tops and low bottom on the weekly charts as well. Now the indicators have gone into the sell mode. So this all clearly indicates that Cadilla too, like Aurobindo Pharma, has stuck in the range. The range is broader, it's too in its wave full correction. So the minimum target on the lower side is expected to be around say 305 to 300 on Cadilla. See, Mangaji, I tell you one thing. As far as pharma is uh, concerned, as we have been discussing pharma stocks now, right now, so it's like the move which we had seen, the dream run which we had seen in pharma, right? Till, you know, uh, few stocks in fact topped out in 2015 and few in 2016. Right, so that dream run which we had seen coming in pharma, right from the level, of, right from 2012 to 2013 until 2015, mid of 2016, those two three years was clearly a wave three, wherein we saw pharma stocks inching higher and higher day on day, week on week, and month on month. Right, but now uh, that wave three is over, and it's time for correction to consolidation in most of the pharma stocks. So most of the pharma stocks, in my view, will be the same. Either it's going to be in the correction phase or it's going to be in the consolidation phase. And this is not a time to be into it because these are the stocks really showing that there is no momentum on the upside. Right? Better I would look for those, those stocks or those sectors wherein we have already seen some bottoming out happening. And that, according to me, is one of the, uh, the sectors which is IT. Right. But, you know, as you pointed out about the pharma pack, do you expect it to be a big underperformer or is it a sell now? So if the, if the Nifty was to double... Pharma stocks will only double or become, you know, in and around that. Or when the markets go down, I as we are seeing I, now, you expect pharma stocks to underperform if it happens. See, when the markets move down, Pankaj, now that depends uh, to the how much Nifty is heading lower, first of all, uh, and then compare how much pharma, down, pharma stock is going to go down, and then you compare the, then you have the comparison basically that uh, the, uh, whether the stocks are for outperforming or underperforming the index. But as far as uh, the view is concerned, uh, despite Nifty going up or down, and even if it, Nifty remains here, this is one sector which I think you know is going to underperform Nifty only going forward, uh, either in the fall or in the rise. Right? Uh, I don't see any uh, move which will you know uh, surpass the highs of 2015 mid or 2016 on on an immediate basis, Pankaj. And uh, the reason for that is, as I said, it has already seen one of a kind of a dream run uh, in three or four years, right? And now once that is over, some consolidation happens that that's the law of nature which we uh, predict as per the elevator of theory and that happens generally you know so only after that you will see again the action repeating on the upside i think that time is still not over so underperformance will continue on in the nifty as far as pharma stocks are concerned right uh, just a word on uh, you know the pharma index itself if you look at the index uh, or you know if you could just tell us about the sector after what sort of a decline will you want to buy these names or you know just avoid them right now See, well, Pankaj, uh, the CNX Pharma, 
uh, which I track and uh, I am clearly seeing that you know it has been trading in a clear downward sloping channel. Okay, so the initial levels of the downward sloping channel comes to the previous lows of around say 9840. If it managed to hold those levels around 9840 to say uh, you know uh, 9850 levels, then I think you know it can again then bounce back from those levels and can bottom out at those levels. But if it breaks 9840 levels, bunkers, then it will head towards the levels of 9490. So these are the levels on the immediate basis which I am looking out on CNX Pharma. Uh, 